Welcome to the New Bedford Preservation Society presentation of Celebrating the Culture of Women Through Architecture. These historic buildings represent a small selection of New Bedford structures that were built by, funded by, built for, and owned by New Bedford women. The years range from 1830 to 1926. They include modest federals to ornate Victorians, places of worship, income properties, some were homes of joy given as wedding presents, others were homes of sorrow built after a spouse passed away. Most of these homes can be found in our walking tour brochures of Kempton Corners, Acushnet Heights, County Street, and the West of County Street Historic Districts. I hope you enjoy the presentation. This recently restored home at 97 Hillman Street is an excellent example of the vernacular Greek revival structures built in New Bedford. Constructed in 1830 by Obadiah Burgess, soon after he purchased the property, he never lived there though. Upon his death in 1840, his widow, Rebecca Burgess, was the first to reside as an owner in this home for a brief time until she sold the property. Its wide street facade accommodates a Greek revival entry of accommodating proportions. Doric pilasters frame a wide doorway with side lights and they support a tall architrave with uncomplicated moldings of the style. However, the splayed window lintels betray a fidelity to a federal style and are elements typical of a building of the early 1830s. Part of the original Kempton property, which extended for six blocks from Elm Street to Sycamore Street, this home at 550 County Street is the 1843 home built for Mary Kempton Tabor by her father, Ephraim Kempton, upon her marriage to William G. Tabor. It is a transitional house with Greek Revival entry and an elliptical window on the north side gable. But Italianate features are throughout the house, including the bay on the south side. Located at 41 Campbell Street between State and Pleasant, this is the one house on the block that stands out for it's the only house which has the gable end does not face the street. Built in 1845 for Lydia and Phoebe Russell, the land was purchased from Abraham Russell in consideration of goodwill, so reads the deed, and remained their home for years. The house is a two-thirds federal style design with a Greek revival entry. The ornately decorated Sarah Ingram House at 1174 Pleasant Street was built on land she purchased from a farmer with a picturesque name of Ichabod Clapp. Like many of its neighbors, this house has also undergone changes since its construction in 1845 and presents the appearance of a grand medieval structure employing early 19th century Gothic cottage verge boards embellished on the west and later Victorian ornamentation throughout. The dramatic upswept mansardic dormers of the home built for Mary Cummings Almy at 706 County Street disguises an 1847 home of more modest proportions. Only the corner pilasters and Doric columns of the porch reveal the original Greek Revival style of this house. It was built by Mary's father, Benjamin Cummings, shortly after her marriage to Charles Almy. Mary most likely had a hand in the graceful remodeling sometime in the 1860s. Located across the street from St. Lawrence Church at 560 County Street is a variant of Italianate style popular in the mid-century. The twin round-headed windows in the gables of the house reflect the corner pilaster designs and along with the brackets over the porch give an Italianate flavor to this house. Its first owner was Elizabeth Kempton Clark who married Charles H. Clark in 1849 and they built this house shortly thereafter on land that was part of the original Kempton property. This handsome Italianate house at 695 County Street was built in 1850 for Sarah Willis Reed in the year of the death of her husband, Dr. Alexander Reed. The bracketed belvedere and cornice supporting a hipped roof with twin rounded topped windows and the three roof pediments of this building are typical of Italianate houses of the 1850s. The Willis property and much of the surrounding land formed one of the original farms of North Bedford. Mrs. Reed and her husband sold to the city much of the land which was to become New Bedford's first city park, known originally as the Common Park. When the house was constructed, the gardens and pathways of the park were just being laid. She would have had an unobstructed view of the park from almost any room in her house. The beautiful tracery of the surround of the front door appears to have had a woman's touch, for it seems to be as delicate as lace. The elegant stairway is just one of the original features of this house. Here we have a small version of a Greek Revival house. It is located at 59 Thomas Street. A widow, 
Susan Almy, is the first person who can be proven to have lived here. The body of the house bears elements of the Greek Revival style, such as the carefully made pilasters supporting a return at the corners and a trabeated entrance placed off-center. The Italianate round-headed windows on the wall dormers are appropriate to the 1850s. The Mary Howland House at 399 County Street was built shortly after the initial owners purchased the lot from the heirs of William R. Roach in 1850. The entire block was once part of the estate of Gilbert Russell. The house built in 1855 for Mary Howland probably was an investment since she sold the house a mere year later in 1856. The house is an excellent example of Italianate style with the Belvedere rising over a center gabled roof line supported by paired brackets over the style. The lively carpentered porch with roof supported by pennant brackets gives a luxurious and comfortable air to the street facade. The colorful Italianate home at the southeast corner of Madison and Orchard was built in 1855 by Captain Henry Tabor for his daughter, Abby Tabor Hunt, and her husband. After the death of Mr. Hunt in 1862, the home was rented to Mr. and Mrs. John Hoadley. Mrs. Hoadley was formerly Catherine Melville, sister of Herman Melville. It is widely presumed that Melville visited here upon many occasions before the Hoadleys moved to Lawrence in 1866. The mansard roof seen here was popular after the 1852 to 1857 years of rebuilding the extension of the Louvre in Paris. The resultant reference to what was then modern French architecture reflected favorably upon the cultured taste of its owner. The Maria Whitman Bryant House stands at 130 School Street. This 1857 Italianate home displays twin rounded windows in the peaked gable of the roof and Italianate detailing around the doors and windows. Otherwise, the house provides a rather conservative five window federal style facade. Mrs. Bryant built this home the year after the death of her husband, city treasurer Frederick Bryant. In 1859, Harriet B. Beard bought a lot of land on Arnold Street. Harriet was the wife of William A. Beard, but the land was not for their joint use. The deed specified that the property was free from the control and interference of her husband. She never lived in the Arnold Street house, but resided instead on the more prestigious Union Street. She was the former Harriet B. Gust, and she married William Beard in New Bedford in 1842, and the Beards had three children. The house at 172 Arnold Street is one of two octagonal houses remaining in New Bedford. There are only about 20 such houses standing today in the state. Octagonal houses were most popular in this country during the decades from 1850 to 1860, although this example was built slightly later. The house is two stories tall, with a stone foundation and a typical low-pitched, almost flat roof. An Italianate influence is seen in the eave brackets encircling the house, but the doorway is more nearly classical in style with side lights and a simple entablature. Since one portion of the house was squared off to create an enlargement, the house today is actually seven-sided. The house at 597 County Street is a cubic house with few decorative features. It is topped by a square belvedere with projecting Italianate moldings above the windows and a handsome bracketed doorway. The curved molding under the roof line is a seldom seen feature. This house was first owned by Alice P. Adams who lived here from 1868 until early in the 1900s. Some of the original features of this house are the beautiful sweeping circular staircase with the original foyer stenciling that features the dado, field, and frieze technique as well as on the ceiling. The house also has double doors with engraved and etched glass panels. At the northeast corner of Merrimack and County Street stands the North Baptist Church built in 1872. The congregation was established by 32 members of the William Street Baptist Church in 1872. A building fund bequest from Mrs. Elizabeth Cogsall gave the small group the wherewithal to build their church. The North Baptist Church is an example of high Victorian Italianate architecture. Though some original detailing has been lost in remodels, the sets of Renaissance round-topped windows, scroll inserts and moldings above the windows, and brackets under the roof lines are hallmarks of this style. The square tower rises to an octagon capped with alternating shed roofs supported by brackets, while Gothic pointed windows flank the entry. This mix of styles is appropriate to the highly eclectic Victorian period. At 603 County Street is the handsome Italian villa style house built for Mary and her husband Michael McCullough in 1873. 
The house was built on land from the original Kempton estate purchased by her father-in-law who had the house built as a wedding present. The house is an Italianate or Tuscan style house, though rendered somewhat formal by the symmetrical placement of the two pediments flanking the central tower, rather than the more picturesque asymmetry usually associated with this style. Jara Swift sold the land opposite his home to a local builder, William Tillingesque, in 1875. Peleg C. Howland purchased the house at 95 Madison Street the same year. After the death of his first wife, he married Clara Kempton, for whom this house was built for in 1875. Following her death, he married her sister, Elizabeth Kempton. European buildings of the 15th century have the same steep roof, intricate asymmetrical plan, exposed timbers, and pierced wooden moldings as this home. The exposed timbers are a hallmark of the stick style in American building while the pierced carpentry is in the fashion of medieval decoration identified with the 19th century English designer and historian Charles Eastlake. The use of several colors to emphasize the variety of carvings was a widespread Victorian practice. At 321 Union Street on the northeast corner of Orchard is a house built in 1881 for Mary Lewis, wife of Elijah R. Lewis, who soon passed away. She had inherited the land from the estate of Eben Perry, who owned the brick home at the corner of County and Union Street. The Lewis House is a large, three-storied home of grand proportions. Its mansard roof makes a reference to French taste. The capitals on the porch columns are medieval, and the bulk of the decoration is indistinguishable from Victorian-era homes of a variety of styles. The large home at 99 Madison Street was built in 1881 for Mrs. Elizabeth Gibbs Leonard, whose late husband, Charles H. Leonard, for many years owned a prosperous candle works company in the city. This home is of the shingle style, a style which was inspired by early colonial homes in America. Its massive intersecting gambrel roof and tall western tower seem to swell outward under the pressure of some unknown inner force, a most characteristic feature of this style. The architect was the firm of Peabody and Stearns, a Boston office who had close ties to New Bedford. The Swift House, built for Sarah Roach Swift and her husband Frederick, stands at 49 Orchard Street. It was the first house built on this side of Arnold Street on what was originally James Arnold's large urban estate. Sarah Roach, daughter of William J. Roach, was then the owner of the Arnold estate. The house is a grand second empire design with a broad porch marked with large scale Gothic capitals. Civil War Captain Thomas Roach Rodman converted to the Episcopal faith and served on the vestry of the new Grace Church, located just south of his home in what was once the Rodman Garden. Gifts of land and money from Ellen Rodman Hathaway and Susan Emlyn Rodman, sisters of Thomas, enabled this solid Gothic church to be built in 1881. Its Gothic features reflected the popularity of medieval architecture, many forms of which were revived in the 19th century. The massing elements of granite and brown freestone grouped around a tall single tower give it a silhouette evocative of medieval Europe. The church hall to the rear was added in 1889 in an appropriate medieval style, though it is the instance reflecting a more domestic appearance. The tall gables, dormers, and steep roof are elements of English medieval dwellings of the 15th century. Our next structure is located at 31 Hawthorne Street and was built circa 1885 as the Miss Lucy A. Leonard School. This was a private school that served the young children of prominent New Bedford families, such as the Grinnells, the Swifts, Cliffords, Howlands, Prescott, and Cooks, just to name a few. The building design is a one-story pavilion-style building sheathed in both clabbered and shingles in an intricate design. This home, located at 52 7th Street, was built in 1889 for Edith Willis. It is of a Queen Anne-style house. It has a two-story bay and a full-length intricate porch on the front of the house. There's a gable feature of a stick-style design over the front entry and brackets at the roofline cornice of the second-floor bay. At 70 Russell Street is a large stick style house with asymmetrically placed gables. It was built in 1889 in the name of Eliza Penniman York after the purchase of a lot of land from Samuel C. Hart. Her father was Captain Joseph H. Cornell who once commanded the Eliza, a whaling bark. 
In 1889, Eliza's husband, George A. York, retired after 12 years of government service and founded a successful insurance and investment business in New Bedford. The Yorks lived here until 1923 when they moved to a home on Hawthorne Street. Characteristic of the stick style are the exposed timbers, which are not only appear in the eastern gable, but overlie the first floor windows and underline the second floor. While these are not structural timbers themselves, they make reference to the structural framing and therefore focus the viewer's attention upon structure and away from pure ornament. The lot at 413 County Street passed to Marsha Parker, the widow of Ward Parker, a whaling and coasting captain turned banker. Here, a many-faceted Queen Anne residence was built for her between 1889 and 1892. Covered with details of decorative carpentry and leaded glass, its silhouette bristling with faceted dormers, towers and gables changes dramatically as one passes. The asymmetrical variety is a hallmark of this style. Mrs. Parker had a love for flowers, thus the interior of the home has many carvings of floral arrangements on mantles and woodwork. Also in the dining room is this wonderful stained glass window showing a vase of flowers. Here at 35 Arnold Street is another house built for another daughter of William J. Roach, Anna Roach Stone, in 1891. Her husband was Francis H. Stone. He was first a sea captain, but by the time this house was built, was a director of the National Bank of Commerce. Their house is an excellent example of the Neo-Georgian style. The rounded front entry and delightful Georgian fenestration marks this restrained yet finely proportioned house as one of the best of its style in the city. In 1893, Lillian A. Gardner built this home at 54 South Emerson Street. It is a recently restored Queen Anne with its asymmetrical turret and irregularly placed windows. It has fancy shingle siding design and there are numerous decorations on the house such as fans on the facade. The next two homes are an area that is now called Clinton Place but was formerly part of the estate of Dr. Edward Payson Abbey, a prominent New Bedford physician. Upon Dr. Abbey's death in 1897, the property fell to his son, Edward Hooper Abbey. Edward Hooper Abbey, also a physician, hired the architect, Nate C. Smith, to design six houses encircling a new road, Clinton Place. Harriet Elmy of New Bedford and her family moved here to Clinton Place at the home in 1922 and remained here for more than 25 years. The house at 2 Clinton Place is the only one in the development that features a full-length rounded turret. All the elements of this house characteristic of the Queen Anne style are the ornate chimney and spindled porch with the portico and columned supports. The use of clabbered covering the first story and shingles covering the second is a popular Queen Anne device. Peak dormers project from the gable roof and a leaded glass window faces Clinton Street. With all the homes on Clinton Place, when the second Dr. Abbey passed away, the homes passed to his wife, Mary Duncan Abbey, who then sold the homes to speculator Jacob Janeski, who in turn sold them to individual owners. In 1926, Bessie Fogg Janeski bought from her son Jacob the house at 6 Clinton Place. She was the widow of Samuel Janeski, a native of Russia. Bessie Janeski was founder of the Hebrew Ladies Helping Hand Society and several other Jewish organizations. She lived at 6 Clinton Place until her death in 1962. It is not immediately apparent that the house at 6 Clinton Place is but one room deep, and its three-story height creates an illusion of enormity. Many features of the shingle style are united under a sweeping gambrel roof of slate. Casement-type windows embellish the first floor and multi-paned square windows are located above. While references to classical architecture are seen in the Palladian window, the dental portico with coupled columns, and the end windows separated by round pilasters. Samuel C. Hunt was trained as a carpenter as a youth, but later attended architectural classes at MIT. In 1907, Hunt was asked to design a home on a lot at 688 County Street for Annie Bartley and her husband Martin. The Bartley house is among the best of the Neo-Georgian homes in this vicinity. The balustraded porch, Palladian window on the second level, and the beautifully detailed dormers above give it a complexity lacking in its neighbors. Notice that the building has only one chimney which rises on the north half of the roof line. Good Georgian design would demand another on the south to balance it, but modern heating system of the house required only one chimney. In his blueprints, Hunt provided a wooden false chimney, now removed, to provide the appropriate balance. 
In 1903, Elizabeth Carter Brooks bought this property from Robert M. Whiteside in the name of the New Bedford Home for the Aged. Miss Brooks was the daughter of Martha D. Webb, a native of Norfolk, Virginia, and a slave on the plantation of President Tyler. Mr. Tyler sent Martha North to receive an education in New Bedford. Elizabeth Carter Brooks attended several schools, including New Bedford High School, Swain Free School of Design, Harrington Normal and Training School, and received a degree at Wilberforce University. As a child, she enjoyed cheering up the elderly with books, flowers, magazines, and things her mother had baked. She came in contact with so many lonely elderly people, she decided to do something about it. And with the help of the Woman's Loyal Union, she opened up New Bedford's first home for the aged on the corner of Mill and Cedar Streets. Two years later, she moved the home to its present place, 396 Middle Street. Ms. Brooks drew up the plans for the New Bedford Home for the Aged on Middle Street while attending normal school. In 1908, the building was completed by Henry W. and Benjamin Tripp contractors. She remained president of the Home for the Aged until 1929 when she married Bishop W. Sampson Brooks of the AME Church and moved west. The board of directors of the Home for the Aged made her honorary president. The building is a two and a half story structure with a hip style roof. There are six dormers in the roof, two in the front, two in the back, and one on either side. Running the length of the front is a large portico supported by Doric columns. There is also a railed in porch above the front porch. The Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church at 532 County Street was originally built for the Christian Science community in 1915 being dedicated as the first Christian Christ Scientist Church in 1916 was a major goal of the group founded in New Bedford by follower Mary Baker Eddy. This square rather massive building is surmounted by a hipped roof and projects a neo-Georgian appearance. Gothic windows and conflicting classical columns are combined beneath a wide Roman arch creating a typically eclectic early 20th century building displaying a selection of historical motifs. At the northeast corner of County of Maxfield Street is the 1916 Neo-Georgian style house built for Lucy M. Brightman at 596 County Street. She was the daughter of Nathan Brightman, who was partner in the sheet metal and plumbing firm of Wood Brightman and Company. She remained here until her death at the age of 75. This is a modest example of the Neo-Georgian house. The square, boxy building topped with a hipped roof with a wide central dormer is a type repeated many times in the city. The elliptical porch roof and delicate window tracery in the entry are virtually the only reference to 18th century Georgian design found here. When the Roach Gothic Cottage was moved, the lots on the east side of Irving Street began to be considered for development. The house at 6 Irving Street was designed by the Boston architect George H. Ingram in 1916 for Sarah Hunt Snow, the daughter of Abby Tabor Hunt, who was then living in her nearby ancestral home built by Captain Henry Tabor. Sarah Hunt Snow was the wife of Robert Snow, who died within two years of their marriage. This home is a classic design of Neo-Georgian architecture. It has three dormers that are arranged symmetrically across the roof line, the wide entrance balanced by identical bay windows on the main floor of the house. The most striking feature is the central window over the entry with its interlaced muntins, a design taken directly from 18th century New England buildings. Built on land once forming the Jonathan Bourne Estate, the three-story brick Italianate mansion was approached by a circular drive from Cottage Street and boasted gardens, greenhouses, and a bowling alley. These were all removed around 1910 for development. This house was built in 1920 for Ella Ivers, who was the daughter of Samuel Ivers, one of the founders of the Southeastern Massachusetts Telephone Company. The stucco cladding was popular in houses of many forms at this time, and the simple massing has only the occasional decorative references to 19th century historical styles. Another architect designed house is the residence at 8 Irving Street, when in 1922 the local architectural firm of Lebroden Bullard designed a house for Agnes R. Hayes and her husband Grenville. Here, the hipped roof and paired dormers cap a house with multiple references to the 18th century, though they are largely used in a free, rather unarchaeological manner. Though the porch is supported by classical Tuscan columns, the dormers are too broad to be Palladian, too traditional to be Spanish. Such free associations with traditional forms are typical of the period. At the corner of County Street and Arnold Street are the Roosevelt Apartments, built in 1926 for the Arnold Realty Corporation. 
the principals of which were Clara Morgan Roach, Anna Roach Stone, and Mary Rodman Roach, three heirs of William J. Roach. The entry bay is marked by tall, thin columns and other Adamesque details of the federal period. It is typical of structures in the early years of the 20th century to attempt to accommodate early American detailing to projects far larger in scale than their models. This is typical of so-called American Renaissance in which patriotism inspired by the Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition of 1876 resulting in buildings eliciting an American colonial reference. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of celebrating the culture of women through architecture presented by the New Bedford Preservation Society.